Hi there, I am Jennifer Elizabeth Masters. I'm a soul sculptor. I help you break out of the mold of the past, heartbreak and trauma so that you can have the amazing life and business of your dreams. Why do relationships fail? And if there was a, an MA to get, it might be on relationship failure, and I think I've had it a few times. So I'd like to share with you the things that I've discovered and many of my clients have mentioned also. And uh, there's quite a long list. I think you're going to enjoy this. Um, and it's going to be quite eye-opening because when we are dating, there's a lot of things that we just let whoosh go by. We don't question things that we see or hear. We don't uh, talk about the things that mean something to us. So here we go. We're going to dive into this, uh, this litany of why relationships fail. So the first one is that when we're dating, we're on our best behavior. And when we're on our best behavior, we don't want to rock the boat so when we see something or we hear something and our date says uh, let's maybe they say uh, you know I don't like kissing and we might really like kissing but we don't question it because we don't want to throw them off or we don't want to throw them to the curb or we want them to like us so we don't question it well what do you not like about kissing so what does that mean for you? Does that mean that there's no foreplay either? Is that what that means? Does it mean that you don't experience passion? <laughs> so if we let something as key as I don't like kissing and we let that go and we don't question it, we're basically agreeing that that's okay. All right, so first one is we're on our best behavior. The second is we don't want to rock the boat. We want them to like us. We want to be liked. And so in that, uh, we, we may not react to something. We may um, become a deaf mute. We may not respond to something where we really need to speak out and go, excuse me, but I don't appreciate that. I don't, I, I don't like that comment you just made about women because I'm a woman. That means that's how you feel about me too. All right, uh, we don't ask questions. So if we don't ask questions, then that means that, that someone that we're dating says something and it could be, I don't want children. And maybe you want children, but you don't question it and you go along and then you go on another date and another date where you are agreeing to the fact that they don't want children by saying nothing. And, and so it's important to talk about the things that are important to you, which leads me to the next one is we don't know our core values or we're not clear about our core values or we don't ask, these things are important to me, family, God, meditation, time alone, nature, pets, cats and dogs, and maybe they don't like cats and dogs. Maybe they don't have cats and dogs and they've never had them. What does that tell you? Don't assume they will be okay with yours if they've never had cats and dogs before. What are your core values? You've got to know them. I have an article out there. <laughs> Why? Why you need to know your core values. Just Google that, Jennifer Elizabeth Masters, why you need to know your core values. Because it's one of the key ingredients. If your core values don't match, you know, maybe um, you, you are a firm believer in God and manifesting and being enlightened and you're very spiritual, but the person you're dating is an atheist. That doesn't align. There are certain things that we could uh, let go, but that's one that doesn't align. So does uh, somebody who wants children and, and you don't want them. Know your core values. And then that leads me to the next one is we need to know ourselves. 
If you don't know what you love and what you don't, what you like to do, what you don't like to do, maybe you like to lounge around in your pajamas until three o'clock in the afternoon on a weekend. And the person you're dating is up at six and wants to be go, go, going all weekend long. That doesn't match with your desire, your, your passion points, the way you like to live. All right. So how about they have either rudeness or bad table manners or they are disrespectful to you and out of the shoot, here's the thing, is that when we are dating, we're on our best behavior. It's the best it's going to be. It's not gonna get better. They're not gonna magically change. That's who they are. And so if you see bad behavior and you don't question it, you are again are agreeing to it. You have to speak about the things that you see as you see them. You know, every day we are training others how to be treated. You know, like a puppy, if you don't, if you don't catch the bad behavior in the moment, you are letting it slide. You are allowing that puppy to have that bad behavior forever. I walk a neighbor's dog. <laughs> this dog, it's not trained, it doesn't listen. It pulls like crazy and off leash or even on the leash, he doesn't listen. So that's a bad behavior. Can you deal with this bad behavior? Mention it, talk about it. All right, you're a people pleaser. Well, so what are people pleasers? People pleasers, if you don't love yourself, and having been there myself, I, I was a people pleaser at one time. I, I did it for well over 30 years, trying to make everyone else happy. And in the end, what happens is we feel lost, we feel uh, neglected, we might feel totally uh, unsure of who we are. When you spend your life pleasing everyone else, then you're not taking care of your own needs. And people pleasers put themselves in last place when they should really be in first place. And I'm not talking about being selfish or mean or rude, but if we don't care for ourselves, who's going to? If you don't love yourself, how can you expect anyone else to love you? You know, we, we get what we give. And if you don't love yourself, you can't expect anyone else to love you. It's the way it works. So people pleasers, if you are working to please the other person, then you're not being authentic. And the more authentic that we can be, the, the better the relationship will be from the get-go. So don't fake it till you make it. Be who you are. You aren't clear about your agenda. Maybe, maybe you don't know. Do you want to be single? Do you want to get married? Do you want to have kids? Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. So here's the thing about that. If you don't know what your agenda is, how can you tell someone else? So maybe you've been single a long time and you enjoy being single. You like having your own place. It, it's nice to go and spend time with the person you love, but it's also nice to come home and have a few days to do what you want, to be on your own. And, and if that's what you want and that's a priority, you need to know that and you need to be clear with whomever you are dating. So all of these things, if you're already in a relationship and, and things are breaking down, it is likely that these are things that you just let slide. You didn't think they were that important. And then all of a sudden, couple years in, three, four years in, you become authentic and then your partner's going to go, who are you? I don't know you. It's best to be authentic from the get-go. All right, so um, you're trying to rush to the finish line and, and you are trying to get married fast. You're in a big hurry. Love is not something that can be rushed, nor can marriage. It's best to date for two years so that you get to know somebody and through all the different 
astrological signs and changes and, and for two years or more because you really don't know someone very well until you've spent that kind of time with them. Oh, if there's age difference, talk about it. If, if you just want to date, say so. Being honest means that you, you speak your truth from the beginning rather than allowing someone to believe something that isn't true. So honesty and authenticity is being real, being true to yourself, and of course knowing who you are, knowing the things that make you happy and the things that don't, the, the things that you must have in your life. I highly recommend that you sit down and write a list, and, and here is what I recommend. To get to know you, write 10 things that you love about yourself. 10. What do you love about you? Not what do you do for others. No, what do you love about you? What are qualities that you have that you love? And if you can't write 10, then you need to, you need to read my book, Odyssey, Victim to Victory. You need to read some of my self-love posts, um, my, watch my videos on YouTube, and get to know and love you for who you are. The second thing that you want to do is write a list of the things that you love to do. Maybe coffee is a morning ritual and you love to have your coffee in silence. You don't want anybody talking to you and then you sit and meditate. Write it down. What do you love to do? And then the next is what are you passionate about? What really rings your bell? What gives you great joy? When you know yourself, then you can be much clearer at the beginning when you're dating. You know, women have a tendency to have, have sex with a guy to keep him. And I'm talking about people pleasing. So if you are getting to that intimate place with somebody before you're ready, then you're doing yourself a disservice. Take a step back, sit down and really rethink what it is that you really want. And maybe you're not ready for a relationship and that's okay. Take time for you. And, and this time right now, right now is a fabulous time to be nurturing yourself caring for you, being your own Valentine, I'm being mine. If we don't take care of ourselves, if we don't love ourselves, we can't expect anyone else to. We have to put ourselves in the prime position, taking care of us rather than giving to everyone else till we're depleted, then we end up resentful and angry. And that is a recipe for disaster. I want you to have the greatest success in your relationships. So I hope that you will watch this again. Take some notes. Send it to your friends. And uh, please do enjoy this series. I do have a bundle that will help you overcome past heartbreak. It is called Infinite Love. It's on my page, on my business page as well. I'm Jennifer Elizabeth Master sending you Big hugs, lots of love. Mwah. Thank you for being here. Post your questions below and I'll put them in the next video. I thank you for watching.